Hey there. So this, this is scholarships. So if you're here for algebra, you're in the wrong place. Um, so I just did a session on the overall financial aid process. We are specifically talking about scholarships here. So if you're here in the room, thank you for joining us online. Awesome. Good, good to know that you're uh, joining us. Over on the table, if you're in the room, uh, there are handouts about the overall financial aid process. There's a bunch of them. There's one specific to scholarships. There is also, uh, if there's not enough on the table, there are boxes under the table of the scholarship booklet. I'm going to talk about this more, uh, but all of this is available online. So if you're here, don't feel like you need to take anything. And if you are not in the room and you're joining us virtually, uh, know that all of this is available on the VSEC website. There is a site specifically for college and career pathways. It's vsec.org slash CCP. So every workshop has information on there. If you missed a workshop because you couldn't decide which one to go to, the slides and handouts are all available online. So everything can be printed out or just viewed online. All right. So uh, we're not going to talk about the whole financial aid process. We're specifically going to talk about scholarships. Let's see what we have here. All right. So we're going to talk a little bit about some things you need to do in order to apply for scholarships, some things to keep in mind while you're doing that. Um, yeah, these are, these are things. We'll make it simple. There's just three things and then four things, and then you're done. Um, so just to tell you, what is a scholarship? Let's talk about that. So there are different types of money that students can get, that families can get to help pay for school. Scholarships are one of those sources. So there are loans, there are grants, there's potentially uh, work that students can do, but scholarships are one piece of that. So to define what a scholarship is, it's essentially money that someone says they want to give to students to help pay for school beyond high school, and the students do not have to pay that back. So that could mean a lot of things. It could be that a student gets it just one time. It could mean that they get it for two years, for four years, and they can renew it over multiple years. Sometimes that's not the case. Uh, scholarships can come from lots of different sources. It could be that the Rotary Club has a scholarship and they wanna give that to students who are local. The college or institution may have a scholarship and they say, we wanna give money to students who are going to our school and we want them to be studying engineering. So it could be very specific, it could be very broad. It could be just based on your admissions application. You apply to a school, you're accepted, and you get that letter that says, congratulations, you're in. And we also wanna give you this, you know, Dean's scholarship of $5,000 a year over the next four years. So it can come from a lot of different sources. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, the key thing to know about scholarships is that they are competitive. So when you apply for a scholarship, the key thing to know is that other students also want that money. So you want it, but other people do too. For the most part, there are, let's just put it this way, there are very few scholarships where there's enough money that everybody who applies can get it. Now I have seen that actually, uh, but it's generally the case you are competing against other students who are applying for the scholarship. So that's the key thing to know as you go through this process. Um, in terms of how scholarships can help, the, the thing to keep in mind overall is that if a student is applying to a college or another type of school, there is a cost to that. Sometimes it's very big. Scholarships can help reduce the amount that students and families have to pay to attend a given institution. Sometimes you can send it to any school. Like I said, sometimes it's school specific or you have to use it in the state of Vermont, that kind of thing. We'll get into a little more detail about that. Just know that there are limitations to them and they're competitive. Those are the key details. All right, so there's some myths about uh, what a scholarship is and isn't. So some students might say, oh, my, my grades aren't good enough. I'm not a very good student. I have a B minus average or whatever it may be. It's not actually the case. There are other scholarships that are based on your interests, what you plan to study. Maybe it's based on community service or athletics. All kinds of other factors might be in play, not necessarily just academics. 
oh, my parents make too much money. We're not gonna qualify for scholarships. Our family income is too high. Not necessarily true. There are scholarships that are dependent on a family's financial resources, but others are not. It might just be based on a student's academics. So that's another one that is not true. I'm not athletic. You get the theme here? So some people think of scholarships and they think of it as like, oh, there's a sports scholarship. I'm gonna play football and I get a free ride. Well, that's true for very few students. Athletic scholarships don't come around very often. They're not available to most students. Not the case you have to be athletic. And then finally, you don't know what you're gonna study. Again, you don't necessarily need to know that. Again, there are scholarships where you do wanna know that, but not all of them. All right, so three things to be thinking about. The first one is communication. So for in terms of scholarships, the key thing for students to be doing is talking to school counseling office, talking to parents or guardians, talking to the institution where you're looking to apply. You want to make sure you have all of the information necessary for your best chance at getting a scholarship. For parents, sometimes they think, oh, my kid's going to apply for every scholarship out there. And then students are like overwhelmed by the admissions process. And you get to that point where you're like, I'm done with these applications. I don't want to do any more. Parents have this expectation like you're going to apply for 10, 15, 100 scholarships. And students are like, how about one? I'm kind of, kind of burnt out. So just talk to each other about that. That's the key. You talk with your school counseling office because there may be scholarships available if you attend that school only. If you go to Randolph High School, there's a scholarship for you if you're going to college. There's tons of money. Not all students take advantage of it. If you go to Williamstown High School. There, guess what? There's a scholarship if you go to that high school. Now, not every school has that, but talk to your counseling office because you want to know, are there scholarships that will apply just to me, just the students here, just the students in this region, that kind of thing. All right. So as I said, scholarships can be based on a lot of different things. So what your eligibility requirements are matters. Are you eligible for a scholarship? What that means, do you meet the criteria to get it? So there could be a scholarship that says you have to be going to school in Vermont, you have to be studying nursing, and you have to be female. If you don't meet all of those criteria, which is one you don't meet, you're not going to be eligible. You have to meet those three criteria. It might be that, oh, you have to be part of this certain program and you just write an essay. That's it. You're part of the program, you write an essay, you're eligible, done. So some have narrow criteria, some have wide criteria. The way to think about scholarships is that there's somebody out there who said, I've got this money, school is expensive, I wanna help students pay for it, but I'm gonna pick who's gonna get that money. So that's why there are all these different criteria because it just depends on who has the money and who they wanna give it to. So meeting the eligibility criteria is important. Two of those criteria are important to keep in mind. Sometimes a scholarship will say, this is based on academic merit. So it means that we're going to look at the classes you've taken, the grades you've gotten. Occasionally they're vague. That's all it says. We're gonna look at that. Now, if you think I'm not that great a student, my grades aren't that great, it doesn't matter. If they're vague, you apply for that scholarship if you meet all the other criteria, because you're just competing against other people applying for that scholarship. You're a B minus student, everybody else is a C plus student. Hey, guess what? You have the best academic merit for that scholarship in that year. The other one is financial need. So some scholarships will say financial need is a factor, but if they're not specific about it, consider that you have financial need. So maybe think like, oh, my family makes too much money. If that's the only thing stopping you from applying for that particular scholarship, do it anyway. Because again, you're only competing against other people applying for that particular scholarship in that particular year. But other eligibility requirements, sometimes they're very specific. You have to have a 3.8 GPA or the equivalent, whatever your school translates that into. Or you have to be studying a particular field. You have to be studying, you know, forestry, whatever it might be. Sometimes they're a little broader. Like you have to be studying in a science field. Now that could be any number of things. So maybe if you're going to study philosophy, well, you're not going to be eligible. But if you're going to study any of the sciences, you might be eligible. So the key for this is just know what are the requirements 
for each of these, am I going to be eligible? So just a final note is that if it says specifically you have to meet this criteria and you don't, don't waste your time. You're not going to get the scholarship. If you have to live in Chittenden County and you do not live in Chittenden County, you're not going to get it. They're going to give it to someone else. So make sure you meet the criteria before you apply. And then finally, again, I mentioned the competition. You are competing against other students. So when you fill out an application for a scholarship, whether that's very simple or very complex and there are lots of pieces, you want to do your best work. Don't just you know, whip off an essay and say that's good enough. Don't take your college essay that you wrote and say like, eh, I'll just change it a little bit. Make sure you're answering the question for the essay and you write a good one. If you have a letter of recommendation, don't just recycle one that someone gave you two years ago or gave you for your admissions application. Make sure it addresses what they're looking for. If they specifically need a letter from a teacher, make sure it's from a teacher. If they want from a coach, make sure it's from a coach. So you're competing against other students. You have to have the best application you can. If you're going to take 10 minutes to do it, might as well take 20. If you're going to take a half an hour, take an hour. It's like a little bit of time can really pay. All right. So when do you do all this? It can be very helpful to search for scholarships junior year. There are a few scholarships where you have to be a junior to apply. Now, often these are very competitive. There are lots of students who might apply, but you have to apply during junior year. There are not a ton of those, but there are a few. It can be helpful. Do your research by junior year to find out what scholarships are out there, what might I be able to apply for. Now, things can change, of course. The deadline might change or whatever, but if you have a good idea ahead of time, that's going to help you to not miss things. Maybe there's a deadline that's really early in your senior year. But if you don't find out about it right away, you may not have enough time to fill out the application. So if you find out junior year, and it's due October 1st even of your senior year, maybe you've gotten a head start on doing that. So you really want to make sure that you research what is out there and what the deadlines might be. Now, for the most part, scholarships are going to be due during your senior year of high school. So they're not typically going to be due during junior year. Senior year is when they're due. And most of the time, they're due in the spring. So if you really are late to the game, it doesn't mean you're totally too late. Uh, but again, the earlier you plan, the more you might be able to apply for. Uh, but again, typically senior year is when they are due. So when you're actually applying for these, you can check in with your school counseling office. Like I said, they're scholarships that they sometimes learn about as the year goes on, maybe there's something new. There was a couple of years ago, there was a local scholarship here in Chittenden County where they were reaching out to the school counseling office saying, we have no applications whatsoever. Can you please get us some students to apply? And there were like three students who applied and they all got it because they had enough money. So check in with the school counseling office. Sometimes schools will have it like, it's just like a list on the website. It's on like Naviance or SCORE if you use one of those programs. So they might direct you to there, but check in regular to see if there's anything new. Um, oh, the other one is the VSEC time on. So I, I do want to mention this, and I'll talk a little bit more about it. But this scholarship booklet, like I mentioned, in here, there are a bunch of scholarships. All of these are for Vermonters. So if you live outside of Vermont and you come here to get information today, most of these are not going to be for you. But if you are a Vermonter, uh, you can fill this out. The deadline for this was February 15th this year. It'll be similar next year. Um, but that's the VSEC deadline that that mentioned on the slide. All right. So when you're looking at uh, scholarships that might be offered by colleges, again, Admissions deadline is the first thing because you actually have to apply and be accepted. Otherwise, any scholarships they offer, well, it doesn't, it's kind of irrelevant. But make sure you're meeting any deadlines that they have. So every college has a deadline for financial aid in general. Make sure you meet that. Sometimes, like I just apply and you might be eligible for a scholarship. You don't have to do anything extra. They take what's on your admissions application, that's enough. But sometimes they may say, well, there's a specific department that has a scholarship, you have to fill out a separate application. So you wanna find that out. If you're applying to a particular school, just ask the admissions office or the financial aid office, are there any other scholarships? You often you just like do a search on their website and find this. But if there's a separate application, oh, I plan to study in that department. 
uh, I should apply for the scholarship because I meet the criteria. So find out what those deadlines are, make sure you meet them. Um, and then the other thing is that scholarships can sometimes have an impact on other financial aid. So there are a few schools out there that say, we will give you everything you need. They have plenty of money and they say, it shouldn't be a factor what you can afford. We will just give you what you need in terms of aid. So they ask for all this financial information and they give you a grant of some kind to help pay what they think you can't come up with. So that's the difference. Then you get a scholarship, done all this work, you get this $10,000 scholarship, amazing. And they say, well, but you don't need it. We've given you everything we need. So we're just gonna reduce what we're giving you. Thanks for adding that scholarship. Then. So it can sometimes have an impact on the money that you get from a school. Now, sometimes that's not terrible because if it has an impact, sometimes what they'll do is they'll say, oh, well, we just, we won't give you this loan that we were gonna give you or that work program. Yeah, you don't have to do that. We'll just take this other scholarship money instead. But it can have an impact. So it's just worth finding out. Again, every school, find out from them, is this gonna, if I get other scholarships, is this gonna have an impact on any other aid that you give me? So occasionally, I guess you could say it's not really worth applying for other things, but that's only if you get a bunch of money from a school. So I always say it's worth applying, put in the work. All right, so this booklet I mentioned from BSEC, there are two types of scholarships in there. There is one that are, we call VSAC assisted scholarships. So VSAC administers this program. There are all these institutions, organizations, foundations, whatever. And they say, we have a scholarship. You know, VSAC, can you help us out? Put this in your booklet and deal with it for us. So VSAC collects applications, all the information puts it together. And then there's a committee of people who decide on every scholarship and decide who's gonna get it. So it's very handy because there is one application for multiple scholarships. Now I can tell you in this booklet, if you're a student, you will look through this and you're like, yeah, don't, not eligible, not eligible, not eligible, cross it off, cross it off, cross it off, not eligible. You will have way more in there you do not qualify for than you do. If you can find 10, that's amazing. That's a lot. If you find three, awesome. If you find five, great. You're not gonna be eligible because they are for Vermonters, but a lot of them will say you have to live in Orange County and you don't live in Orange County. So you just cross it off the list. So what I recommend with this booklet is you just go through and you just look and you say, oh, yeah, I'm not studying nursing off the list. Yeah, don't live in Chinon County off the list. Oh, not in college yet. You have to be in college, oh, cross it off the list. You will find in general with scholarships, you're not gonna be eligible for a lot of them because they're just too specific. Don't let that dissuade you from applying. You wanna apply for the ones you are eligible for. Okay, again, this is available uh, October 1st. There is an online application. In order to get this, you have to create an online account. You fill out an application. Your high school will very likely have to upload things about you, like your high school transcript, for example. Most of this is just gonna happen online. You can do it on paper if you really want to, but it's kind of 20th century. All right, so one thing to think about just in terms of like, okay, there's tons of scholarships out there that's great to know. How do you decide what makes sense to apply for? So one way to think about it is look at what is local. Now you can apply for that Coca-Cola scholarship or the Best Buy scholarship. They're really big. You get that, you're, you're set. You know, they give you like $40,000 or whatever. It's awesome. It's gonna pay for school. You're, you're gonna be good to go. However, that's available to everybody. So you get thousands of students applying because why not? It's, it's a lot of money, right? If you look at like a local scholarship, you know, like who else is gonna apply? 10 people, 100 people, who knows? It doesn't matter. It's still gonna be a much smaller pool of applicants. If your high school offers a scholarship, you know, it's like how, how many students are in your high school? And then you whittle that down to just seniors. And then you whittle that down to just those seniors who are going on to school. And then to those who are willing to fill out a scholarship application, like you have just really reduced your competition. So you, what you wanna do is apply for scholarships where your competition is the smallest and local scholarships often are the case. It might be only $500, but if that's $500, you know, that you don't have to borrow, seems like nothing compared to, you know, $70,000 cost of the school, but you don't have to borrow that $5, $500. So it's worth applying for. One other way to think about scholarships is that, let's just say, you know, you have to write an essay, gather letter recommendation, there's an application, 
and you're really slow at doing it. You know, it takes you a long time. You really want to revise and your recommender takes a long time. You have to remind them 10 times and it takes you like 10 hours for that one scholarship. And then you only get $1,000. I mean, do the math, like 10 hours for $1,000. Like you're not going to get that working at Hannaford. You know what I mean? So it's worth generally applying for scholarships, putting in the time, because if you get it, it's generally worth your time. All right. There are global searches as well. So you want to find that Coca-Cola scholarship, this is where it might show up. So a site like FastWeb, and there are others out there. These are just a couple examples. On the VSEC website, we have more links to other broader scholarship searches. You know, like FastWeb, you create an account and you put in, here's where I live. Oh, my father was a veteran and I have Polish ancestry or whatever. Like you, they ask you all these questions that are very detailed. They spit out a list and say, here's some scholarships you might be eligible for. And then you look at that list and you're like, what the heck? Like, I'm so not eligible for that. Why did this come up? Whatever. That's just kind of how the system works, but it's going to narrow it way down. And usually these are scholarships that are broader and have more competition, but sometimes more local ones are in there. So it's worth just doing these kinds of searches, see what comes up. And if you're willing to put in the time, then put in the time. I mean, I feel like every couple of years I hear about somebody who's just like, they're just gung-ho about applying for scholarships and they covered the cost of school because they applied for like 50 and they got only a few, but it was plenty to cover their costs. All right. Um, okay, so one, one way to sort of like visualize this is think about like the broad national scholarships is like the outside of this big ring, right? So there's like, a lot of them out there, lots of competition. They might be bigger, not necessarily. And then you get a little more local. So that's something like the VSEC scholarship booklet where there are scholarships in there. You might be competing against all other Vermonters. Yes, there are some that are very localized or, or small, but some are like, you know, you have to be a good student living in Vermont. It's pretty broad, a lot more competition. And then there are the local ones in the middle. So again, if you wanna think about how you're gonna spend your time, look for and apply for the local ones, and then think about like statewide ones, and then think of the more broad scholarships. So if you think, I just am not gonna have enough time to devote, again, go local first. All right, so you may have heard about scholarship scams. You know, students get a lot of emails. Like once you've done the PSAT, you're gonna get so many emails, ridiculous coming from colleges, coming from institutions that say, apply for this, apply for this program and so on. For the most part, if you seek out a scholarship and there's no fee to apply, you know, it's probably legit. But anytime someone says, oh, we'll do it all for you. Again, scholarships are competitive. Anybody who has a scholarship is saying, we wanna see you apply for this and pick the best candidate for this scholarship. So someone says to you, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll do it all. It's probably too good to be true. If you have to pay a fee, put down a deposit for a scholarship, you really wanna be skeptical of that. So it's not like this is super common, but just be aware that, you know, sometimes this happens, these things are out there. There are lots of students, families who really are like, we just really can't afford school, whatever it might be. So just be cautious if someone approaches you, whether it's through email or whatever, um, just keep your, keep your eyes open about what this means finalist in a contest you never entered. Come on, be real. All right, so just to sort of summarize this a little bit. One, you wanna find the scholarships. So identify the ones you might be eligible for. So whether that's local or broad, find them, make sure you meet all of the eligibility criteria. Now this may sound really obvious, but reading and follow directions, which you probably started learning in like first grade, is really important with scholarships. You wanna make sure that if they say you have a letter from a specific person, like I said, it comes from them. They may say, write the letter in this format and include your social security number and date of birth. If they ask for that, and the only way to get the scholarship is to do that, then that's what you give them. If you know there's a particular application, make sure you fill out the application and you don't leave anything out. One thing that can happen is, you know, sometimes a scholarship would be based on what you plan to study. If you don't include that, they're going to say, well, we have no idea. You're just not eligible. So that's just kind of what happens. Um, deadlines. So for scholarships, 
No one's going to say to you, hey, this deadline's coming up. Oh, we missed the deadline. That's not going to happen. It's competitive. So you want to make sure you meet the deadline. In fact, it's often good to exceed the deadline. Don't get it in that day. Get it in a few days before. So, if, for example, you have to have a letter of recommendation submitted. You want to make sure that that is in on time, not just the part that you have to do as a student. So all the pieces of an application have to meet the deadline. If there's a problem, you want to have time to fix it. So try as much as you can for any deadline to meet it ahead of that deadline. And then if, you, if there's something missing, you still have time to fix it. Uh, and then finally, you can confirm if something's been received. So for example, with the VSEC scholarships, no one's going to reach out to you and say, it looks like you applied for this scholarship, but we're missing that letter of recommendation. That's not going to happen. But if you call or send an email and say, hey, did you get that letter of recommendation that so-and-so said they were going to submit? Then they'll tell you, no, we didn't receive that. It's not, it's not our system. So you can find out if things have been received, but no one's going to reach out to you to let you know. So you have to be a little bit more active to make sure that your application is complete. So just in terms of what, what do you do? So you go through this process and you find the scholarships and you fill them out and you get them in on time and everything's complete and you're the best applicant that you can possibly be awesome. What happens with scholarships is someone is going to select who gets the scholarship. Now, sometimes it's just one. It's like, we have one scholarship to give out. Everybody who applies, we're gonna pick one person. Sometimes it's more than one. Maybe it's two or three or 10 people get a scholarship. So often you can find that out ahead of time. But typically what happens is there is a group of people, a committee, somebody is going to decide who will get this. They will go through the applications and decide uh, who, is, who is the best fit for this scholarship. Now, often, and this is true for the VSEC scholarships that I mentioned, uh, the criteria are listed in order. So if it says academics are the most important thing. It's just a list of like, well, you have to have a 3.2 and you have to live in Vermont and so on and so on. That one at the top is probably the most important. So that committee is gonna look through and see, oh, let's look at the academics first. And we're gonna say, oh, this student, we said you have to have a 3.2 and they only have a 2.5 GPA, not considered. They're just off the table. So it kind of gets winnowed down by the criteria. If you have to submit an essay, it's like, oh, there's that one student never submitted an essay. They're out of there. Next thing they'll do is read through the essays. They pick the top however many, and then they take some out. So it's kind of like, well, whatever all the criteria are, the committee is just going to go through all those until you come up with the final number. So that's in general how scholarships work. Then after that, so they go through all this work and they're like, excellent, we have the person who's going to get the scholarship or the multiple people. For many scholarships, you're not going to find out unless you get it. So they're only going to get in touch with you if you have been awarded the scholarship. Now, sometimes they'll say, check the website, or we will let you know on this date, or we'll make a decision by this date. So if you just don't hear anything, well, bummer, check your spam folder. Um, and other scholarships will say, we're going to tell you yes or no. So with the VSEC scholarships, you will find out you are not going to be a recipient of the scholarship, or yes, you are going to be a recipient of the scholarship. So just be aware, you don't always know that you haven't been awarded directly. So that's a, just a piece of information to find out ahead of time. What will happen at the end of this process? How will I find out or not? All right, so just to kind of summarize a little bit, again, they're competitive, so you want to be the best applicant you can be. You know, don't skimp on this. You want to make sure you give yourself plenty of time. Do it as well as you can. So focus local. Then consider the more broad scholarships. Uh, there's scams out there. And again, think about, will this impact any other financial aid that you have? This is kind of the big things to think about. So I mentioned all of these things that are over here. These are all available online. Uh, there's a scholarships page specifically. So if any of the stuff that you know, I've blathered about over this last half an hour or so you don't remember, that's fine. You don't have to remember every detail. Um, it's all the resources are available online. New information gets posted as we get it. So this booklet, for example, once it's available October 1st, we usually post a PDF online. Uh, 
by then, sometimes before, and we put them out in high schools as well. So there's just information coming out all the time. So there are plenty of resources as you go down the road, especially like if you're a sophomore, you know, it's not like we're gonna stop producing information, so. Okay, and there we go. That's the end. How about that? So simple. All right, so if you have a question, Sarah over here has a microphone. Uh, if you're in the room, uh, please use the microphone because folks online will not be able to hear the question without it. So the question is, if a student is a Vermont resident during the admission and the parent relocates to another state, what happens to that scholarship? So are you asking so if a parent is in another state? If the parent relocate, probably the second year of the student attendance to that school, will she or he still be considered a Vermont resident to continue with that scholarship or what happens? That's a really good question. So in order to apply for a scholarship, you just, you have to meet all the criteria at that time. So if a student's applying for the first time, then a student needs to be a resident. Like for example, if you need to be a Vermont resident, student applies, they have to be a Vermont resident. If the student were to move out of state, then they wouldn't necessarily be eligible to apply for that. If it's a renewable scholarship, it's gonna depend. So it just depends on the criteria. It could be that wherever the scholarship is coming from, once you get it, you've got it. As long as you stay in school, maybe you have to meet other criteria. It's not gonna matter for others that might. So you just, it's something to check ahead of time if you think that might be the case. Scholarships are all different, unfortunately. So it's not like there's one answer. It depends on the scholarship. Other questions? This might be another one where there's more than one answer, but in general, can you use scholarship money for anything? So like if a child gets tuition remission because a parent works at that university, but then there's the fees and room and board, can scholarship money be used for that? All right, so really the broader question is what can you use a scholarship for? So just to back up a little bit, when a student attends a college say, that school is gonna say, here's what it costs for you to attend. That's gonna include your tuition, it's gonna include any fees, it's gonna include room and board, travel expenses, there's a bunch of things that go into that. That's your total cost of attendance. Typically a scholarship can go toward any piece of that. So if a student, for example, has their tuition covered, student works at the institution, they get that covered, then if, if they live on campus, they still have other expenses. So a scholarship potentially could go to cover those other expenses, yes. This is a fantasy, so I know that right off stop, but it's connected to that. If you went for scholarships and you got more money than all of your expenses, what do you do? All right, this is a dream, right? Yeah. Student is so good at applying for scholarships. The school costs $60,000 and they get $70,000 in scholarships. I mean, you, everything's gotta be covered. So if you have any loans, work study, you can just get rid of that, turn it down, say, I don't want this, you cover everything. Most of the time, scholarships will be sent directly to the institution. So whoever has the scholarship, they're going to say, where are you going? Verify that you're there, and they will send the scholarship directly to the school. Now, if that happens, the school is going to get more money than they need. They're just going to send it back. So the scholarship folks sent a check for however much. They're like, well, we don't need this. It's, it's unnecessary. They just return it. Now, some scholarships will get sent directly to the student. So if a student earns a scholarship or is an award in a scholarship, it'll get sent directly to them, in which case, you know, bonus. You can just hang on to that, use it to buy your laptop, whatever it might be. Unusual, wouldn't that be nice if it happened to everybody? <laughs> um, thank you for the presentation. Um, you listed the VSAC dot org scholarships page for as like a kind of big database of scholarships available is that like comprehensive everything that's available through the state or are there other databases we should search on as well yeah so that page i had up there with some of those places to find scholarships like 
the VSEXA doesn't list like every scholarship that's out there. It's, uh, it's basically links to where you can find them. So there's a link to the scholarship booklet, which has all those Vermont ones. It's gonna have links to places you can do those broader searches where you can find other ones. So there are just too many. I mean, there's no one place that's gonna have absolutely everything because it's just too much. But it's a good starting point. The VSEC website's a good place to start because you can go in there and see, oh, here's a place I can do a search and kind of kick it off from there. School counseling office, again, like those hyper local ones, they might not be online anywhere. So you kind of, you have to search around. You gotta do the work. Are there ways to improve your chance of merit scholarships and what would they be? So there are ways to improve your chance of merit scholarships. So uh, merit scholarships through say directly from an institution. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so if you're, that's like where you apply for admission and they say, great, you're in, here's a scholarship. Often that is based on academics. So two ways you can, you can sort of think about that. One is there are a few schools out there that are really clear about it. You wanna find a good example, Blackburn College in Missouri. They will say directly on their website, if your GPA is 3.0, we will give you $10,000 a year. It's 3.2, we'll give you $12,000 a year. They're very transparent. Most schools are not, but you can improve your chances just by the better you do academically, the better test scores you get. Obviously you're more in the running for those things. But the other thing is to think about like, can you put yourself in the top of the applicant pool in terms of academics at a particular school? So you have those super competitive schools, you know, there are plenty of students who are number one in their class. And if you're not, well, you're just not as competitive. It doesn't mean you won't get anything. You're just not as competitive. But you have a school that's maybe less selective and the students who they select tend to be in the top 20% of their class and you are, like you're much more likely to get a scholarship. You're much more likely to get it if you're a student that they're looking for, you know, because they're like, we really want students from Vermont. We have so few at our school. Maybe you're more likely to get it. So make yourself more competitive or think about schools where you might be more competitive and you're gonna increase your chances. Awesome, well, thanks everybody for joining. Uh, I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. So if you have a question that's specific to you, you wanna ask, feel free to do that. And otherwise we're out early. Yes, class dismissed.